Hi students, we are going to go over the Unit 3 Quiz 2 review. So um, starting at the beginning here, we have a slope of four-fifths with an x-intercept of negative 8, 0. Write the equation of the line. So the mistake that you're probably going to make on this one um, is that you'll read that as a y-intercept, which it is not. So I'm going to treat my x-intercept just as any other point. So this is just a point um, with an x and a y value that is here. So I'm going to write this um, in terms of a slope and a point, which means that I can write it um, with my transformations or my point slope um, or point, yeah, slope, point, intercept, point, slope form in mind. So y is equal to um, four fifths represents, remember the slope represents the stretch of the function. Um, so four fifths is my compression. In the parentheses, what happens in here is the left or the right. So this point went right, or sorry, went left eight units, which is going to look like right. So we're going to write x plus eight, and then it went up or down none. So you can either choose to put the plus zero in here or not. I'm going to throw it in there just so we kind of know where that's coming from. But there's an equation of our line. There's no reason to multiply it out, take any extra steps, because all it asks for is an equation of the line. Now it asks for the, what's the y-intercept. So a reminder for a y-intercept is that my x value is equal to 0 for a y-intercept. So that's how I'm going to solve this equation. So I'm going to do 4 fifths um, times 0 plus 8 and plus 0. So this plus 0 can go away. This plus 0 can go away. So really all I have to do is 4 fifths um, times 8. I'm going to throw that over 1, and that's going to give me 8 times 4, which is 32 over 5. And I'm just going to leave it at that. It's 32 over 5. Now, if you wanted to, this is 6 and 2 fifths, which is also 6.4. So any one of those is a correct answer there. Um, through two points, write the equation of the line in point-slope form. So this is our transformation form. Um, but point slope form here, so I need the slope. So the first thing I need to do is I need to find the slope of this line. So I'm going to do um, negative 6 minus negative 2 over 4 minus negative 1. So minus the negative is plus a positive, so those become positive. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4 over 4 plus 1, which is 5. So my slope is negative 4 fifths. So y is equal to negative 4 fifths. Remember that slope is that stretch flip um, compression in parentheses left or right. So let's go ahead and use, I'll use negative 1, negative 2. So I'm going to write this as x plus 1. So it went left one unit and went down two units. So we're going to go minus 2. So that's my point slope form um, that is right there. Um, the equation of the line in slope intercept form then requires me to multiply this out. So I'm going to distribute my negative 4 fifths. So that's going to give me y is equal to negative 4 fifths x minus negative 4 fifths times 1 is also negative 4 fifths, and then minus uh, 2. And if I'm taking this to slope intercept form, the only other step I have to do is combine these two pieces. So I end up with y equals negative 4 fifths x, and combining these two, it is just a negative 2 and 4 fifths. Um, which is the same thing as negative 2.8. So if you want to go with that, you can. So I can write my equation, y equals negative 4 fifths x minus 2.8. Okay, given this graph that's here, so we've got a point right there, and we've got a point right here that I can see. Write the equation of this line in point slope form using the point negative 3, negative 3. So we've got this point right here that we're going to use it. Um, I do, in order to do point slope, I have a point. I need a slope. So my slope of this one I'm going to find by counting. So the rise of a run, so it rises negative 2, and it runs a positive 3 since it goes down 2 and right 3. So that slope is negative 2 over um, 3. So my equation would be y equals negative 2 thirds. Again, that's my stretch flip and everything like that. Parentheses is going to tell me my left or right. So this one went left 3, so I'm going to write x plus 3. Remember, it's always the opposite there. And then it went down 3, so it's going to be minus um, 3 then. So that's what we're going to do um, in that one. Sorry, give me just a second here. Let's see. Okay, write the equation of the line with the description in slope-intercept form. So we've already written it in point-slope form, and we utilize that form to change the slope-intercept form. So I'm going to distribute my negative two-thirds here. 
So that's going to give me y equals negative 2 thirds x, negative 2 thirds times 3. So we have negative 2 thirds times 3 over 1, which is going to be negative 6 over 3, which is negative 2. So we have then minus 2. Don't forget your minus 3 that's at the end. And then combine like terms. So we end up with y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 5 is what we would have there. Okay, set up and solve an equation that can be used to find the x-intercept. So remember, x-intercept is when y is equal to 0. So I can use any one of these equations. This one's a little shorter, so I'm going to go ahead and use that one. And I'm just going to set y equal to 0. So set up and solve an equation, which just means take one of the equations. So I have a 0 in for y. It's equal to negative 2 thirds x minus 5. And then I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So that's going to give me 5. Um, move this down, sorry, a second here. There we go. 5 is equal to negative 2 thirds x. And then to get rid of negative 2 thirds, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So negative 3 halves, those are going to cancel. And whatever you do on one side, you do to the other. So I'm going to multiply by negative 3 halves. Put that 5 over 1. That's going to give me negative 15 over 2 which is equal to x, this is also negative 7.5. I can go ahead in my graph and check to see if I think that that's right. So negative 7.5, it's over there. It looks to me like it's going to be right. So my x-intercept set up and solve an equation. So we did the setup, we solved. They can be used to find the x-intercept. There's my x-intercept right there, okay? Then it asks us to set up and solve an equation that could be used to find the value y value when x is equal to 5. So x is equal to 5 is what's given to me. I'm going to just su sub that into this equation. So y is equal to negative 2 thirds times 5 minus 5. So negative 2 thirds times 5 here is going to be a negative 10 thirds and then minus 5 again. This is a negative 3 and 1 third minus 5, which is going to give me a negative 8 and 1 third. And you could use a little calculator to find that, but that's my y-intercept in this case. Um, not my y-intercept, that's my y-value when x is equal to 5. So I should know that I would have at 5, I would have a point at negative 8 and 1 third, and that looks about right on the graph as well. Okay, given this graph, number four, illustrate the slope of this function on the graph. So we've asked you to do this before. So illustrating the slope would be showing here that we're going rise. So we're going up a certain amount here. I think that was five, one, two, three, four, five, and we're going over one. So there's illustrated the slope there. Identify the slope. So that slope is five. Five over one is five. State the transformation of the function from the parent function y equals x. So y equals x, remember you can use any point to talk about the left and the right. And the slope represents the stretches. So the slope, so we should say that we have a stretch um, vertically by five. Okay, not a compression because that's not less than one and not a flip because it's not negative. And then we go left and right. So I'm going to go ahead and use this point right here to tell my um, transformations. So I'm going to say that we went right one unit and we went up two units. It's not wrong if you decided to use this other point that's on the graph in order to describe that. Um, and then circle, sorry, circle the x-intercept on the graph. I don't know why that doesn't have a letter next to it, but um, so circle the x-intercept on the graph. This would be my x-intercept. It helps if I don't circle that point then. So this would be my x-intercept right there. Okay, in the table, given this table, what's the average rate of change? So for average rate of change, you just need two, any two points, which means you can use any of these points that are in the table. So I'm going to go ahead and just use these first two that are in the table here um, to solve for this. So average rate of change is slope which is y minus y, so 6 minus 1 over, and then you got to do your x's in the same order, so negative 2 minus 3, which 6 minus 1 gives me 5, negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, and that simplifies to negative 1. So my average rate of change in this is negative 1. Equation and point slope form based on the point 3, 1. So there's my point, and then I know my slope now to be negative 1 is going to be y equals negative 1. Remember, that's my flip and stretch. So this one does not stretch at all, but it does flip. And then parentheses, and then my right or left, so it's going to be, since it was right 3x minus 3, and it's up 1, so it's going to be plus 1. So being able to write that. Convert your equation in part b into slope-intercept form algebraically. So this is showing you that you're going to distribute here. So we're going to get y is equal to negative 1x. Negative 1 times negative 3 is going to be a positive 3 plus 1. And then I'm going to finish that step by combining my plus 3 and plus 1. So y is equal to negative 1x plus 4 is what we would get there. 
Um, what is the initial value of this function? So just a different way to ask here um, for my y-intercept um, in this one. So my x value would be equal to zero. I don't have an x of zero in the chart. So I'm going to go ahead and use my equation to do that. So y is equal to negative one times zero plus four. Again, y-intercept has an x value of zero. So that's what I did. Zero times negative one is zero plus four is four. So I get y is equal to four. So my initial value here, my y-intercept here um, is four. Okay, output and input using those terms again. What is the output value? So what is the y value if the input is 7.5? So my x is equal to 7.5. So I'm going to do the same thing I did here. y is equal to negative 1 times 7.5 plus 4. So negative 1 times 7.5 is negative 7.5 plus 4, which is negative 3.5. So my um, y value in that case is negative 3.5. Then it um, flips the problem around and says, what is the input value, so the x value, if the output, if the y value is 7.5? So I'm going to do the same thing with this equation, but plug in the y. So 7.5 is my y is equal to negative 1x plus 4. Um, I'm going to solve. So to solve for x, I need to subtract 4 from both sides. So that's going to give me 3.5 is equal to negative 1x. And then I'm going to divide by negative 1 to get x by itself, which is negative 3.5. So it actually happens, and this is not always the case, but it happens that those are um, the same answer in that case. Um, just to clarify that those are not the same answer here, this one then has a point of 7.5 comma negative 3.5, and this one, um, the point is negative 3.5 comma 7.5. So those are um, not the same there. Okay, given this equation, um, so this equation is in our transformation form or point slope form. Um, it actually asks way down here, describe the transformations of this function from the parent function. Let's start with that. Um, so if I look at negative one half, that means that this has a flip or a reflection over the x-axis. Um, it has a compression of one half. And it goes, it looks like it's right three, so that means that that's a left three because it's the opposite, and it goes down two. So if we think about what our original function would have been, I'm going to just do dots for it, is that this would be y equals x. And so if we think about all of these changes and what's happening um, with that line right there, let's see if I can do this, if I can connect. Okay, so if that's my line, and I want to make these changes. I think it's going to let me do it. So negative one half means I'm going to flip that line. So I would go ahead and completely flip it over. Let's see if I can get that. There we go. So that one's flipped. And then one half means I'm going to compress it. So instead of going over one up one, it's over one up one half, or in this case, over one down one half. So I'm going to compress this. Still going through zero, zero at this point. Got to do a few adjustments here to make this work. Um, and we're going to end up with something like that. So there's my one half. So again, over one down a half. So we have that versus over two was up two, over two is down one. Okay. And then it says plus three. So that means we want to go left three with this whole thing. So I'm going to take this whole thing from this point right here where my pen is. Sorry, it's not letting me do it. Okay, hold on. I got to switch. Okay, so from this point right here, I am going to go, no, oh, that's weird. It doesn't like to let me move it. What if I do that? Okay, so it's going to make me um, switch it here. Um, so let's just go ahead and draw a new line then um, based on this. So if I'm going to move then um, left three, I would go one, two, three left and down two, one, two down, I would end up here. And so I want that same line. Um, through that point right there, um, and it's going to look something like that. So I have that negative, and I have that down one, up one, or down one over two, um, but that idea. So I can get rid of that one and have my line there, okay? What is the y-intercept? So in this case, that y-intercept, um, I do not believe that y-intercept actually goes through a value. I believe it's at negative three and a half. So I'm going to say negative three and a half, but I am going to um, check that in my equation. So y-intercept is x equals zero. Okay, so I would have negative one half times zero plus three minus two. So I would get three. So negative one half times three minus two. So multiplying these together, that would give me 
Uh, that's time. So that would give me a negative 1.5 minus 2, which is negative 3.5. So I've clarified that that is exactly what I should have gotten there. Um, and it asked me to circle the y-intercept on the graph. So I would circle that right there. Okay, then it says, what is the slope? So the slope in this case, um, I can actually just come up here to find my slope because we know that the slope is the stretch and compression. So negative one half is my slope. Illustrating on that on the graph here, I can go down one and over two. That's my illustration of that. Um, and then lastly, what's the x-intercept? So I'm pretty sure I know what my x-intercept is over here. So especially if I go off of this point here, up one over two, up one over two, up one over two, yep. We're at negative 7 there for an x-intercept. Um, oh, box it in on the graph. It would help if I draw all that stuff correctly. Ah. Okay, there's my box on the graph there. So we end up at um, negative 7. If I wanted to check that one algebraically, I'd put 0 in for my y. And we already described that um, as well. Okay, last but not least, convert the following equation to the specified form to slope-intercept form here. So lots of things going on here. Get rid of the um, parentheses first. So distribute this negative. So we end up with y minus 5 is equal to negative x minus 11 plus 2. Um, I'm going to combine my like terms that are over here. Um, so I get y minus 5 equal to negative x um, minus 9. And I want y by itself in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to add 5. And that's going to give me y is equal to negative x minus 4. There's my slope-intercept form. Um, slope-intercept form here, I need y by itself, so I'm going to subtract 3 to the other side. So I get 8x minus 3 equal to negative 5y. I'm going to go ahead and flip the order of that, so I have my y on the left. So negative 5y equals 8x minus 3. And then I can divide by negative 5 everywhere. And it's going to be an ugly one, but I don't have to do anything with it. So the negative 5 goes away there, equal to that... Um, slope will be negative 8 fifths x, so just writing it out, and then minus um, 3 uh, divided by a negative 5 here, so that's going to end up being a plus 3 fifths um, is what we should have uh, in that case. Sorry, just checking to make sure. Yep, we're good. Um, and so that is my um, answer there. Clearly can't. There we go. Maybe. Okay, and then the last one is to put it in standard form. So remember when you're putting something into standard form that you're getting the x and the y on the same side of the problem and all um, integers. So negative two, sub, subtract 2x to get x and y together. So negative 2x, a positive y equal to negative 2. And that's all you have to do because everything is an integer there. Okay, we are done.